Hi everyone, it's Lisa and welcome to Make It Monday. Today is the third week in a row that I'm going to be featuring technique projects for you. Today's technique is called the pinwheel. This is just one of several samples I'm going to show you, but I want to focus on how you can make this. So let's get started. You're going to need a one and one quarter inch square punch and designer paper. The great thing about the Stampin' Up! designer paper is it's double sided. Um, here's some scraps I'm going to be punching from today. You're going to need eight pieces entirely. But since I'm going to use two different papers, I'm going to do four and four. So I'm going to do four from this flowered pattern, and then I'm going to do four more from the solid green pattern. So this is what we've ended up with. You're going to need us two squares that are cut two and five eighths inch by two and five eighths inch. So here that I have two of them. And I'm using very vanilla because it mimics the background of my designer paper. If your designer paper has a white background, then make sure you use white. You can use colored cardstock here if you like as well. I'm just going to do this for the purpose of the video. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a diamond pattern with these two pieces. And the best thing you can do is use the Stampin' Up! grid sheets to make this so much easier for you. Let me show you how. The center of your grid paper comes together with two darker black lines. What I want you to do is I want you to just visually find the center of here, here, and I'm going to use these black lines to line up the points of my cardstock so that I know that it's even. This piece then is going to go like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a small box of adhesive in the center of this piece of paper. And I am going to use my grid paper to help me line this up perfectly. I love the small dotted lines on the grid paper because they allow me to follow that to keep everything straight. All right, so now we have these two pieces put together into a diamond shape. So now we're ready to start with our squares. I'm going to start by just putting a small amount of snail adhesive in the center of the back side of the square piece that I've punched. I'm going to also leave a small vanilla border around the paper as I adhere it. I have learned the hard way that you don't want to use too much adhesive on this in case you have to pick it up and reposition it. So a little more adhesive and now I'm working on this point, leaving a small border around it, turning it, this point. Now I'm going to go back to the flower pattern here, leaving a small border again. Now I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay, so here we are. We have the last panel that needs to be filled. But this one, you're going to have to put on top and under to get that same pattern going again. You can see why it's so important not to use too much adhesive because otherwise you couldn't get this in here. So I am going to put a little bit more adhesive here in the center. And I am going to go on top of the one I've just done and underneath the one I started with. And again, I'm going to leave a small border of cardstock around there. Now, I do go back and I put a little bit of snail adhesive here to hold my panels down. And if you need to or you want to, you can go back and add more adhesive to these areas if you feel that it's going to lift. I've never had that problem. I love this little center so that you can add a button or a brad. I've added a button here. I've just made a little bit of an air knot, which is just a knot in your ribbon attached with a glue dot. This is from the Neutrals Designer Series Paper Pack. This one Look at that, that's kind of fun. I've actually used the embossing folder here. I've used some shimmer paint to go over it. I don't know if you can see it or not. And then I used a little bit of a marker touch to the centers of those flowers. This is a flattened soda pop top, and I just used more designer paper to put in the middle. You're going to notice that this one I used colored cardstock versus vanilla or white to go around. And then finally, Here's my last one. This is T for Two Designer Series Paper and the build brad is in the center of here. To me, this just looks just like such a gorgeous quilted pattern and I like to focal point it with something small. Well, when you finish your cards, give me just a quick tip. Don't overdo the other embellishments because this really is what plays up your card. 
I hope next week that you will come back for another technique during my series. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss anything. Don't forget to visit my blog too where I post daily samples and I look forward to seeing you next week for Make It Monday. Yeah.